scattered. They become discouraged. They begin to doubt. Why? Because he was in the middle. He just, it was already placed for him, the Holy of Holies. He just hadn't got there yet. Are you in a whirlwind? Are you in a storm? Because the Lord says, I have my way in Nahum. He says, I have my way in the whirlwind. I have my way in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of my feet. Oh, I don't know if you're in a whirlwind. That's the in-between. Or you're in a storm. That's the in-between. But guess what? God has something for you on the other side. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My son was in the middle. Right in the middle. But let me tell you something. The devil can't lie to me. God already had his place in heaven for him on the other side. That's what I hold on to. I know that he has a place now and he's walking in victory. He's walking amongst the streets of gold. He's walking with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's walking he's a cl- in the cloud of witnesses. He's dancing. He's praising. He's worshiping. He knows things that he never knew. He knows mama was telling him the truth. He had made it to the other side. Woo! Where are you at? You think your trial's rough? You can't tarry. If I can hold on, you can hold on. Yes. If I can believe, you can believe. I know my purpose in victory is on the other side. You all haven't seen nothing yet because you're just in the in-between right now. You may be in a hardship right now. You may be having you may be having financial troubles right now. God is your provider. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Provision is on the other side. I am is on the other side. I am is in the middle and the I am was before you. I am is in the before you. I am is in the middle and I am is on the other side. So whatever you need in the middle, I am has it for you. Whatever you need at the end, I am has it for you. And whatever you need it, you know I am had it for you. He has it for you. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.
not because it looks good to us or it seems like it's going to work out or we can see our way out, but his word has to be the final authority. And if he says you're coming out, then you're coming out. Amen. Amen. I remember when he told the, the, uh, the disciples, he said, let us get in the boat and go to the other side. See, it didn't matter what happened between the assignment and the destiny. He said, get in the boat. We're going to the other side. He didn't say that there wouldn't be a storm in the middle or that the rain wouldn't come. He said, get in the boat and we're going to the other side. That's right. We have to know that it doesn't matter what happens between the time he gives that assignment and the destiny. We're going to the other side. Amen. So whatever it is you may be yeah. going through right now, you're going to the other side. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But the problem that he was having with the disciples is the same problem that he's probably having with you, you, and you. is your faith. Well, we said we have faith, Pastor Benicia, um, but do we really have faith? See, faith is not the check is in the mail because the IRS owes you something. Come on, somebody. <laughs> faith is not, well, we met with the marriage counselor and my husband and I are going to try to work. Faith is there is no way out. Ain't got no check coming from nowhere. But I believe God's going to do just yeah. what he says. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. My son is in a situation right now where he and his family are homeless. Never been homeless in their life. Mm -hmm. And he was all broken and balled up. And I said, are you serious? Mama, you know, you and dad got favor. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. What dad and I have is not favor, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Favor is you don't have no job. You don't have no car. Mm -hmm. You don't have no means to pay your bill, but you're still full. You still got a roof over your head. That's what All favor right looks like. Right oh, my God. Somebody's going to hear me. Favor right. is not because you see me driving. I got a Jaguar in the driveway that I haven't moved in two years because I don't feel like driving it in, in, in cars in a beautiful house because my husband gets up and goes to work and then has a nice salary. That's not favor. That's hard work. Mm -hmm. Favor is you don't have no way to make it, but you're still making it because the favor of God rests upon your life. Mm -hmm. So we get in this because we're so carnal minded. We have this Hallelujah. thing messed up. Yes, Our carnal Lord, mind it. does not dictate God's ability. Say it. Hallelujah. What I can think and conceive of my mind does not dictate God's ability. Am I helping you? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So really, really quick. Um, if I had a word to bring to you right now, it's like we have to, if you notice that God is raising up women, women just popping up everywhere. We're about to go to this big conference in October and all these pastors from everywhere, Deborah's and Jael's and Esther's just rising up. We're just going to all come together and, and just feed one another. And it's, so it's a time of profession, but God is just raising up daughters. And so there's a little skip going on in my church with a couple of uh, new men ministers that, you know, they want to contend with my husband about women being pastors. Uh -oh. Mm. No. Yeah, so he brought some scriptures uh, to my husband's attention. I'm just going to talk to y'all today. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, to my husband, and he's like, you know, he have a problem with, you know, women being in authority. And my husband, of course, he's going to defend uh, the Holy Spirit. Because my husband knows that, that, that uh, there's a difference between opinion and the Word of God. Because yeah. often we take the Word of God and we twist it to, to fit or uh, justify our own opinion. Yes. Yeah. So the scripture that the man used was that what Paul said, not God. Because Paul made it very, very clear. He said, I, not God, mm -hmm. I would that, that let the women remain silent in the church. Mm -hmm. Paul said it. Never said God said, but then he skipped, forgot to mention the part that God said in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all oh, flesh. My sons oh, and daughters amen, will prophesy. Amen. Old man to dream, dream, young man to. So I, I, I decided to help him out. Because see, my Bible tells me, again, the word has to be your final authority. And I'm going to help somebody. So don't let your flesh and your ego start, stop you from, from having an occasion to give God glory. Mm -hmm. Don't let flesh and ego stop you from giving God an occasion to get the glory. Watch this. So because there was a skip going on, I decided to help them all out. Mm -hmm. Because love believes all things, hopes all things, believes all things, doesn't seek its own, is not puffed up and not proud. So I decided to help them out. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. For the sake of peace and for love's sake. Love doesn't seek its own. I said, what I'm going to do for you, religious people, is I'm going to relinquish the title of pastor. Since you have an, a, a problem with women pastors. I said, I'm going to relinquish the title of being a pastor. But that's not going to stop me from answering the phone at 4 o'clock in the morning 
when somebody's in trouble. It won't stop me from running over to that shelter, putting families in. It won't stop me from feeding the hungry, young setter. You can take the title, but it won't stop the work of the Lord that he's ordained me to do. Watch this. Yeah, it won't yeah. stop me from going out to the boulevard ministering to the prostitute. Yeah. It won't stop me from going down there trying to get the gun, gun from the game banker. You can take the title, but is it going to stop the work? I said, but if I pulled your title right now. Mm. Ah, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> if I pulled your title right now, are you going to stop showing up to church on Sunday? Are you going to stop going down to the boulevard with us? Oh, you don't go to the boulevard with us on Sundays. I mean, on Saturdays. Are you going to stop feeding the homeless? Oh, you don't feed the homeless with us on Sunday. See, we got to get rid of our flesh and realize that we are nothing. And it's not about the title or the position. It's about the assignment. It doesn't matter what happens between the assignment and the destiny. Am I helping somebody? Yes. Amen. Love, see, if I, see, love says if he eat meat, if he don't eat meat and I eat meat, mm -hmm. if I'm causing him to stumble, just do it. Mm -hmm. For love's sake. Mm -hmm. Back up. Just okay. If it's the title that's bothering you, but it won't stop me. Mm -hmm. It won't stop me from doing what God called me to do. Because I do it as it is a debt that I owe. I'm paying a debt. Mm -hmm. But we got to get rid of these foolish things. Mm -hmm. And remember that we have to get kingdom minded. It is time out for foolishness, women of God. Amen. He's rising up the daughters of God. He's calling us to the battlefield, and we got to get ready to fight. Mm -hmm. It's time to get rid of the Gucci, mm -hmm. take off the Prada, and get clothed in righteousness. Amen. 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 Am I helping somebody? Amen. So watch this. Amen. God has, uh, you, most of you know that I was in the military, and um, one of the things that uh, I learned when in, in the military was that uh, the level of warfare was contingent upon the size of the enemy. The level of warfare was contingent upon the size of the enemy. And so we, daughters of God, have to first get kingdom minded and remember and realize that we are in a war. Yes. We're in a constant war. And it's a, a war, an accidental war, it's a circumstantial no war. It was a God ordained war mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Jim, go with me quickly to Genesis 3 and 15. We're going to go. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to really, really quickly go to Genesis 3 and 15. Because we have to realize that we are in a war. And as daughters of God, you often wonder, why do we go through so much hell? I mean, from the time we're hit, we hit the ground, we're, we're plagued with issues of abuse and molestation and low self-esteem and inadequacy and, and fear and doubt. God ordained. God ordained. Yes. Watch. Genesis 3.15 says, I will put, God, I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman. Yes. And between thy seed, Satan's seed, and her seed. The woman's seed, God said, shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Enmity is more than a mere few, Benicia. It is a war. Enmity doesn't translate dislike. He didn't say, I'm going to make it where you and Satan don't like each other. It translates in Hebrew, enmity, Ava. And Ava means hate. Mm -hmm. So what that means is Satan, I'm going to make sure that Satan hates you. Mm -hmm. And that you hate Satan. Amen. But see, the problem is Satan hates us. Yes. He is constantly, from the time we hit the ground, he is constantly showing us that he hates us. He's constantly <laughs> setting up traps for us. He's trying to, constantly trying to destroy us. But we, amen, somebody, um, have come to like and enjoy the things that are associated with him. Watch. Enmity is supposed to work both ways. Right. We're supposed to hate the enemy. But we have been, in that passage it says, she says, he says, why didn't you eat the fruit? And she says, because Satan beguiled me. Mm -hmm. We have been beguiled by the enemy Come on now. to be attracted to the things of the world, to be attracted to those things that Satan presents to us, uh, i.e. fast cars and uh, handsome men and drugs and alcohol and money and all those things that beguile us and cause us to lose focus of our primary purpose, which is to worship God. Amen? So she said, Satan beguiled me. He tricked me. He trapped me up. And that's what he's doing. He's trapping us up so that we are not long, no longer focused on doing what God called us to do. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. There's a constant war between woman and Satan. 
Satan keeps his part of the deal. And he wages war on us all day. Well, we are balling up, and he just says, and getting into fatal, fetal, fatal position. Because when I'm balled up, I'm at a disadvantage. But when I'm standing flat-footed on my feet, Come on now. amen, when I'm standing flat-footed on my feet and I'm telling the enemy no more, no more will I allow you to run roughshod on me. I know what God says, and God told me in his word that I have the ability to bruise your head. Yeah. See, Satan got the memo. We didn't get the memo. So now, the trick, this is what his tactic becomes. Because in the military, we studied our enemy's tactics. We learned what his weapons were, how big he was, where he was hiding. We have to study the enemy that way. Right. So we, he said that we, he was under our foot and that we would be able to bruise his heel. Now, it is impossible. It is physically impossible for me to be able to bruise the head of something that is big as what I make Satan to be. I've got this big red guy with two <laughs> horns and a tail uh -huh. and a pitch horn. It is impossible for him to be as small as God says he is. And big as I make him for me to be able to have a victory over him. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. We've got to put him in this place where he belongs. He is under our feet. Watch this. So, so, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So, we have allowed him to become bigger to us than what God says he is. Watch. So. Back to my, to my word. Okay. So in the military, again, we learned that the level of warfare was contingent upon the size of our enemy. There are three levels in which we are to engage our enemy. Three levels, women of God, in which we are to engage our enemy. There's a fight. Mm -hmm. There's a battle. Okay. And there's a war. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a fight means to contend in battle. I'll watch this. Listen real close to this definition. To contend in battle or physical combat. Especially to strive to overcome a person by physical blows or weapons. There are two words to pay attention here. The first one is physical. Yeah. We are trying to fight spiritual battles with physical means. Come on now. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, physical. But they're mighty through God. For the pulling down. Am I making sense to you guys? Yes. So we, we keep trying to fight spiritual battles with physical means. And the second word to per, pay attention to is person. Watch this. We're fighting against people instead of the real enemy. Come on. Spiritual weakness in high places. Rulers of darkness. I'm fighting Benicia. You're fighting your husband. You're fighting your disobedient children. You're fighting that co-worker at your job that, that keeps pissing your bit. Am I helping you? Y'all said this before. Come on now. And if you did, go ahead and repent. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But physical, we're trying to fight these things the wrong way. We're fighting people instead of the real enemy. The Bible tells us clearly that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. We're fighting with blows instead of the, the weapons that God has given us to fight with, oh, which is praise. Prayer and the word. Yes. Praise, prayer, and the word. Somebody offends me. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm God will not. No, we need to go. The Bible says. But we don't do that. Why? Because my ego, my flesh will not allow me to utilize the weapons that God has given me to fight these battles, i.e., why we're losing the battle. We're losing the battle because we're not fighting with the weapons that God has given us. We can't fight both ways. The Bible clearly explains to me that I'm not a natural being having a physical experience. I mean, a physical being having a natural experience. A spiritual being having a natural experience. Other way. I'm not a natural being having a spiritual experience. I am now a spiritual being having a natural experience. I become spiritual. So and the, the oil and water don't mix. So now I have to live spiritual. I have to think spiritual. And I especially have to fight spiritually. Uh, hope I'm helping somebody. Yes, you Amen. Are. Okay. Amen. Now, the second definition was battle. So we know what a fight is, to contend in battle or physical combat. Battle is one in a series of small fights. <laughs> uh. <laughs> one in a series of small fights. We have constant battles in our life. Amen. Bible says, the battle is not yours. No, it's not yours. It's the Lord's. Amen. But you keep fighting all these battles 
all these battles. You want to show up in these battles. You want to fight them physically. And you don't understand why you're losing. God, why am I defeated again? Why is it not working? Because you're still trying to fight with your flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like when we get through one battle, here comes another one. Back to back. We can hardly regain our footing before the fire comes again. But we change our thinking. To remember that we are fighting in a war and focus on the bigger picture and the overall victory instead of our own personal triumph, Amen. we stand a better chance yeah. of winning. We got to get kingdom on it. No soldier ever steps up to the to the war and saying, okay, no. I'm going to fight him. <laughs> the goal is to fight the enemy as a whole. Am I making sense? I've got to fight the whole opposing force as opposed to one person. That's or right. one thing, one issue. I've got to fight the whole overall force. Am I making sense to you? Strong, when I'm, yeah, the strong man, thank you. The whole, it, we've got to take down the whole force. Yeah. I.e., the next definition, which is a war. War is an organized, armed, and often prolonged conflict that is carried on between nations. There is a nation against a nation. There's a nation of, of holy people fighting against a nation of darkness. Am I making sense Amen. to you? Watch this. There's a whole nation of, of, of evil. There's a whole nation of, 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 of darkness. And we're a whole nation of righteous people, holy people. We should be. Yeah. We should be. But we're not because we're mixing oil and water. Oil and water don't mix. Mm -hmm. It don't mix. Watch this. I'm going to help you. Watch this. Thank you, Jesus. We have to get organized and, and, and strategic in our war against the enemy. Mm. Now watch. One of the things we did was we studied our enemy and we learned his tactics. And he's been using the same tricks and the same tactics for ages. And we've been falling for it far too long. Over and over again. The same thing. Lies and deception. Lies and deception. And we allow him to defeat us because... We're still in the same place. The Bible says, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our minds have not been renewed. Uh, that is why we are still in the same place. People coming to the altar with the same issues over and over again. But it's time for us to get kingdom minded and realize that we are fighting the wrong battle the wrong way. But it's we're so quick to say, I'm a warrior woman. I'm a soldier. As long as we're overcoming. Come but we're like the enemy is overtaking us then we no longer want to fight spiritually. We want to pull out the, the sword, and we want, not the sword, but the other kind of sword. Right. We want to pull out the things. Right. We want to pull out the words to hurt. Amen. We don't want to fight. I, I told a young lady the other day, it was a Jew, I said, you're going to win that fight, but the answer is between your knees and your ankle. Mm. Not right here. Right. We got to learn how to fight the way God is calling us to fight. Amen. 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 Uh, we got to get strategic, you guys. We have to remember that we are not fighting in a fight or a battle, but a war. Amen. And so in order to fight in a war, one of the, one, the things you have to be is you have to be equipped. You have to be equipped to fight in a war, right? Mm -hmm. He says, put on the full armor of God. The most important piece of that fight. Amen. Yes. Amen. The most important piece is the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. With which to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Because it don't matter if I got a sword, it don't matter if I got shoes to walk in peace, but if if I don't have a shield to protect my vitals, yeah. amen, mm -hmm. we got to put on the shield of faith. Amen. Amen. So let me talk to you about that really, really quick. I, I wasn't, uh, so okay. I said, okay, so. Take your time, Pastor. In addition, he said, take up the shield of faith, which which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. We were given a plethora of equipment to use while we were in, in the military and um, to protect us. And we were given specific instructions on how to use each piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Each piece was equally as important as specific <laughs> function. And it was explained to us. And if we went into battle with any, without any one piece of the equipment, we were vulnerable. Yes. Each piece worked synonymously together to protect us for the overall battle. So if I went out, I could have anything else, but if my helmet wasn't on, 
If I had my helmet on and everything else, but I didn't have my shield on. So I have to be fully equipped when I'm going on to battle. So just to back up, women of God, call to the battlefield, amen, to stand on the fight and war and fight, amen. It's time for us. We're called to war, amen, and not battles and not fights. We're called to, to, to fight this war, amen. Yeah. Daughters of God, forget about the religious liars, amen. God poured his spirit upon all flesh, and he's calling the remnant, yeah. calling the remnant, amen. rising up his daughters, amen, to fight. But we've got to be equipped. we got to get strength. Teaching in a nutshell. Watch. Okay, so um, Paul explains to the church in Ephesus the importance of being fully armed for battle. He explained what each piece of armor was to be worn, and when uh, and when he gets to the shield of faith, he defines the purpose. Now watch. He gave he gave us all of the pieces, but when he got to the shield of faith, he explained it. Hmm. He explained the purpose of it. He said. To quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And he goes on further and tells us that this piece of armor is to be used in all circumstances. Because without faith, it's impossible. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to rule, to win the war. Without faith, it is impossible to overcome. Without faith, it is impossible to do anything. Right. This is a faith fight, y'all. Right. Yes, it is. Amen. This is a fight of faith. Right. Amen. Watch. Amen. Watch. So... He said, because in the middle of the war, it is important for every soldier to believe that they have the ability to win. You cannot go on the battlefield and look at your enemy and say, I just don't know if we can do it. I just don't think we can fight this. I don't, I don't know, Benicia. They look bigger than us. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so, but why do we do that in our circumstances? Right. We have to approach every circumstance. Marriage troubles, financial troubles, health issues, job problems, whatever it is. We have to approach every situation knowing that we have the ability to win it. No soldier gets on the battlefield doubting their ability to be able to win. You have to go in knowing I can lick them. They might be outnumbered, but I can lick them. They might have better women's weapons than us, and I can lick them. The doctor might say it's terminal, but I can lick it. The doctor, he might be gone, but I can lick him. My husband might be packing his suitcase, walking out the door, but I can lick him. We have to remember that we don't have to fight for the victory. The victory is already ours. Yeah. We're fighting for something that we already have. Come on now. So you can't go in the battlefield with that mindset, wondering if you're going to be defeated. You can't have any room for that. That's not faith. We pray for a lot of things, but how often do you really, God, help me with my unbelief? Yes. Because that is where we're going to win. Faith is the substance of things to hope for. I need a bottle of water. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you done with that bottle? That cup? Yeah. Let me see that. This is hope. This is hope. It's empty. Forget the coffee. It's empty. It's hope. Hope is empty. Faith gives hope substance. Hope is zero. Now, faith, and then the evidence is, I'm winning. Mm. Hope is nothing without faith. I hope we win this war. But faith gives activation. It gives substance I to hope. That. And now I know we can win it. Why? Because now there's evidence of it. Faith produces evidence. Am I making sense Amen. to somebody? Amen. So we cannot win a war that we don't believe we have the ability to fight. We have to know that we have the ability. Not only do we have the ability, we've already been given the victory. It's like getting in the ring with Mike Tyson, as big as he is. Ugly as he is, <laughs> and he's knocking you these punches, and you're on the ground, and your eyes are swelling. But when the bell rings, they hand you the bell. Why? Because it's promised to you. We already have the victory, but we have to get kingdom minded. Yeah. You're like that. We are in a war, a constant war. There's a battle every day in your mind. Yes. Driving down the street, somebody cuts you off. You got a battle. Mm -hmm. Do I let the finger go up? Do I keep driving? Mm -hmm. You know? Okay, I'm 15 minutes late for work. Do I sign in at the right time? Oh, I'm going to go down your street in a minute. Uh -huh. I sign in at the right time, I go, hey, ain't nobody watching. Come on now. You know, I, 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 I could buy these two. This girl got five extra kids. I could just buy one of these kids for my taxes. We have a fork in the road at every, at every junction. junction there's a, we have a choice right. to do what is right. Versus what is wrong. Amen. To give God the glory oh, and to yes, choose amen. the right thing. We have an opportunity and occasion 
to choose the right road. Often we choose what feels good or what makes my flesh comfortable. Yes. But in the kingdom mind, we're concerned about the overall victory. Mm -hmm. We're concerned about the overall, uh, the, 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 the team overcoming as mm -hmm. opposed to my own personal yes. triumph. Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I helping you guys? Amen. Okay, I'm almost done here. All right, amen. He who faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not afraid, dreams of faith is an action word. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. yeah, the evidence is the victory. As Christians in the middle of a battle, we intend to allow the multitude, magnitude of the attack, watch this, and the noise from the gunfire. Mm, noise. Mm -hmm. Were you talking to me about that the other day? Mm -hmm. The noise from the gunfire. Benice and I were talking the other day, she's talking about there's a sound versus a noise. Noise is annoying. It's something irritating. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> so I allow, in the middle of a war, I can get distracted uh -huh. about my stance and my position, my ability to warm because I'm focused on the noise and the gunfire. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Am I making sense? Yes. But when I put up a sweet sound unto heaven, sound overtakes noise. Mm -hmm. So when I lift up a sound unto the Lord, and I begin to praise God, and I begin to give worship God, there's a sound heard in the heaven that brings down victory. So I'm not distracted by the noise of the gunfire, because I'm lifting up a sound unto the heavens. Yes, amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The noise from the gunfire and the circumstances surrounding the attack can cause us to doubt the possibility of a victory. Can cause us to doubt the possibility mm. of a victory because I'm focused on what I see and what I hear as opposed to what God says. It has to be my final authority, which is where the shield of faith comes in. Faith reminds us that though the fulfillment of God's promise may not be readily visible to us, but it is in his word. Yes. yes. Amen. God is true to his word. David was called a man after God's own heart yes. because of his exemplary faith. No matter what was going on, even in times when he couldn't feel or hear God kneel, mm -hmm. near, David proclaimed his faith and believed that God would come through yeah, for him. Amen. No matter what, David said, I don't care where I'm at. I might be in the valley. I might be up on the mountain. But I know God's going to come through. And God called him a man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. David declared that it didn't matter about the size of the army or the size of the attack. He knew without a doubt that God would bring him through. Do you know without a doubt on, that man. God's going to bring you through? It might be bigger than you. Everybody at your job might be against you. It's one against 20. <laughs> yeah. But do you know without a shadow of a doubt God's going to bring you through? Your bills may be piling up on you. But do you know without a shadow of a doubt that God's going to bring you through? Mm -hmm. The doctor said it's terminal. But do you know without a shadow of a doubt that God's going to bring you Because that is faith. Faith says, I don't care. What nobody says, God's going to bring me through. Yes. He's going to give me the victory. Now that he's already given me the victory, but as he said, my enemy is under my feet. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. One more thing that I need to give you guys. One more thing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Roman shield at the time was called a scutum. The shield mm -hmm. that the Romans used, the shield of faith, the type of shield was as large as a door. Mm -hmm. So now, you know those mm -hmm. little shields we use? Yeah. Little shield. <laughs> that wasn't the Roman shield. The Roman shield was as tall as a door, right? Wow. And that would cover the, the, the oh, soldier's wow. entire person. Wow. Now, 